Good afternoon. Um, we are about to represent the conclusions from, well, say, intensive work during the weekend and our correspondence in last in last few months. Um, we are going to talk a bit. Uh, about sex and class uh, equality and the relation uh, between class and sex uh, in many aspects. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce the members of the group. So um, I will start with, uh, as I have written it in my, in my, I don't know, presentation. Therefore, Stanimir Panayotov uh, holds a BA in philosophy, an MA in philosophy and gender studies, Euro-Balkan Institute in Macedonia, uh, and is a PhD student in gender studies. Uh, he has interests in and experience with queer activism in both Bulgarian and, Mace Bulgaria and Macedonia, and queer theory, continental philosophy, Marxism, critical and postmodern theory in gender studies. Uh, he has published many articles and book reviews in various publications in Bulgaria and beyond, and has trans translated numbers articles and several books from the aforementioned fields, Wendy Brown, Adrian Rich, David Hopper, and etc. Uh, his last work is a co-edited volume on, uh, on Marx, heterogeneous readings from the 19th, 20th century. He's also a member of the teams of New Left Perspectives, a Neres book and Trans Europa Sofia. So this is Stanimir Panayotov. <laughs> well, I must say, I must say, quite, quite impressive uh, uh, autobiography. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, Liliana Burzer is uh, also a member of the group and she was intensi intensively um, involved in the correspondence during uh, the past few months. She's not with us, unfortunately she had to um, uh, go back to Ljubljana because she has uh, scholar uh, work to do today. Um, few words, just a few few words about Liliana. Uh, she earned a PhD in the humanities and social sciences and she works at the Department of English at the Faculty of Arts in Ljubljana. She is a theoretician, writer, involved in struggles for public education. She is a socialist and a feminist. No clapping. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Uh, Adriana Zaharievic is coordinator of Women's Studies Center in Belgrade, Serbia, researcher at the Faculty of Political Sciences in Belgrade, and CTCE CTC project at the Edinburgh School, School of Law. She is the author of Postojanje ženom, Becoming a Woman, and the editor of Somebody Said Feminism, Netko je rekao feminism, uh, the book which had four editions till, till now. Thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, Tiana Okic graduated at the Faculty of Philosophy in Sarajevo, where she is, where she is currently employed as a teaching assistant. Areas of her interests are ethics, feminist theory, left feminism, political theory, and social theory in general. She translates from French and English and is a member of editorial board of Young Researchers Journal Sophos. Um, our discutant uh, uh, is uh, uh, Silvia Federici, a scholar, teacher and activist from the radical, autonomist, feminist, Marxist tradition. She is a professor emerita and teaching fellow at Hofstra University, where she was a social science professor. She worked as a teacher in Nigeria for many years, is also co-founder of the Committee for Academic Freedom in Africa. Um, Silvia Federici's best known works are Caliban and the which women, the body and primitive accumulation and re uh, revolution at the point zero, housework, reproduction and feminist struggle, a collection of different essays from 1975 till uh, 2010. <laughs> so, and uh, my name is Ankica Čakardić. <laughs> 
I am a coordinator and moderator uh, of this panel, um, uh, teaching assistant at the uh, Cathedral for Social Philosophy at the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities in Zagreb, a feminist, a theoretician, and so long. <laughs> I didn't write it, so, so it's a bit reduced, I must, I must say so. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so, um, um, we thought maybe to structure that today's discussion is somewhat divided um, in three parts. In the first one, uh, we will try collectively to present our conclusions raised in our working process during the uh, intensive weekend and the previous month um, corresponding via email. In second part, um, Silvia Federici is going to do some sort of general comment of overview concerning our conclusions. And then, of course, the audience is welcomed to ask and, uh, questions and to participate uh, in a debate. So let's start with the conclusions, but uh, before that, just to um, make two pre-notes, uh, methodological, methodological notes. Um, the first thing we wanted to achieve somehow is to contextualize sex and class uh, equality in the context um, of um, socialist feminist tradition. Um, therefore, this is a part of... Um, some sort of making a direction of uh, discussion and to partially explain the reasons of our conclusions. So, again, we are starting uh, from the socialist feminist point of view. The second note, methodological one, is dealing with the uh, conception of uh, conception of sex and gender. Um, we wanted to avoid identitarian phenomenon uh, considering the, the gender and, and sex. And um, we are about to talk about sex and gender as a structural problem. Uh, therefore, there is some sort uh, of a necessity of historical material analysis of women's opp uh, oppression, uh, not only today, but historically speaking. Um, and the third point is somewhat addressed to the economic crisis um, and maybe the conclusion that it attacks uh, women the most. We will try to discuss it uh, in the context of changing um, the family structure, that means uh, in the periodization of capitalism, and, um, um, and therefore this is like the point of reference uh, in order to explain what do we mean by uh, economic crisis attacking uh, women and of course the relation between patriarchy and, and capitalism. Um, the points that we are going to present, the first three points, are partially raised by Liliana Burzar, um, because she's not uh, here with us. Um, probably we won't be able to explain completely the whole, uh, the whole context uh, considering those, those three points, but it probably uh, will be enough that, that we expand or um, explain some sort uh, or some, some points of, uh, of uh, the conclusions we raised. The first conclusion, um, it's, uh, it is dealing with the problem of liberal, problem of add-on strategy. Um, that means that in the context uh, of leftist politics or uh, emancipatory politics, it is quite um, a problem to add on some parts of the struggles, uh, struggles of subjects to the some uh, dominant leftist uh, concept. That means women, LGBT, race, nation, ethnicity, and, and so, or, so long. Uh, as a result of that, uh, socialist feminism, which has a major contribution to make towards a systemic analysis of oppression, is sidelined. As a result of that, again, the analysis of economic exploitation and oppression is is impoverished. Um, it is also a partially a way of uh, disregarding socialist feminism uh, and a platform of divided struggles is created which obliterates a systematic grasps of the variegated. Mm, a system of capitalist exploitation based on race, gender, sexu sexuality, nationalism and imperialism. So these are the just, just the notes. Uh, now is the time maybe to involve some of them 
participants and panelists, and maybe to explain more some some parts of the first conclusion. For the instance, what is the strategy of Erdogan in the context of leftist politics and uh, the liberal aspiration in in that in that in that sense of the word? What do you think, Adriana? <laughs> This is like a talk show I'm having at, at the national television. I'm always asking people by names, please, would you be so kind and tell me? Okay, we just, we just started with uh, the idea of how to conceptualize the socialist feminism, where to find, or how to conceptualize the feminist feminism that we all subscribe to. And of course, it wasn't easy, and uh, we were trying to be innovative and not to go and not to try to um, take some already existing definitions, especially not made in the Western tradition, but to try and search for uh, traditions which will, I don't know, um, combine the existing Yugoslav, post Yugoslav traditions and what is the best from the traditions in the West. And that was the reason why um, we wanted to, uh, in the end, and especially Liliana, now I'm trying to interpret Liliana's words in her absence, which, believe me, is not easy. Uh, so, yeah, she insisted on that, that we try... <laughs> I see faces that understand me. <laughs> in any case, I mean, what was important for us is to try to uh, think of feminism which would be in line with the left and also to try to think of uh, the definition which would not only be uh, imported from other traditions. Uh, anyone else, maybe? Uh, maybe. Stanley, just... <coughs> maybe I should add something about the so-called add-on strategy of, uh, of feminism. Uh, I should say, um, well, this is hardly possible. Uh, it's hardly possible to ascribe this to each and any national context regionally when it comes to Eastern Europe. But so-called add-on strategy is very legitimate in uh, both the political left and uh, so-called liberal democratic parties, especially throughout the 1990s. Uh, however, there, were, there is this little difference that uh, when it comes to uh, traditionally socialist parties, such as Bulgarian Socialist Party, for example, uh, the add-on strategy some, somehow inherited from the previous regime, um, which basically means that as much as uh, the Bulgarian Communist Party up until 1990 hadn't um, engaged in any explicit socialist feminist work and propaganda, uh, if you will, um, that until 1990, it didn't address any sort of uh, minoritarian issue uh, in so-called post-socialist tradition with very much the same argument uh, that women are pretty well integrated in the political Bulgarian context, which is partially true with a lot of uh, hesitations. Um, but also, also because, and, and that already concerns other political uh, parties from the establishment, also because, uh, and we will talk about this later, I think, in another point. Uh, the um, welfare state has been heavily transferred onto the non-governmental sector, whereby the liberal democratic um, um, sort of, uh, the liberal uh, democratic sort of feminism, which was dominant until very recently, I should say. It's still. Yeah. Uh, Silvia, would you like to comment or? Yeah. Please. Well, I come from a feminist tradition and from a type of feminist perspective that in fact has been very critical, not only of the add-on uh, uh, practice, but also of the traditional socialist Marxist approach to the question of the oppression of women. So much of the work I have done with other women has been in fact to from a feminine perspective, to the look at the whole Marxist socialist analysis of capitalism. And uh, more and more, not only look at the history and position of women in capitalist society, but bring the knowledge of our own oppression to reinterpret what capitalism is. And uh, in fact, this has been extremely important because I think uh, 
some of the work we have done, I think, has been some of the most important uh, redefinition of what class struggle is, of what capitalism is. For example, we have criticized the uh, socialist Marxist concept of work. They see work only as far as wage labor. And for example, has never considered work, uh, all the unpaid reproductive work that women have done. And for example, have seen reproductive work, domestic work, as a kind of pre-capitalist legacy in capitalism, and not instead as a capitalist construction, because our argument has been that domestic work creates, produces the working class. So uh, this is the perspective that uh, that's why an add-on strategy is absolutely uh, impossible, because in fact the question is, you know, how, from a feminist viewpoint, from a viewpoint that is concerned with the question of reproduction, uh, and uh, with the kind of um, hierarchies that have been constructed on the sexual division of labor, how, from this perspective, then we can reinterpret, you know, capitalist relation, capitalist society, and also what kind of struggle we need to make you know, to go beyond capitalist relation. Okay, thank you. And this takes us to the second uh, second point. Uh, I think there won't be need to expand it uh, because we already somehow grasp it with the first point. But it uh, it deals with the historical tradition of socialism and Western knowledge production of what socialism was. Um, therefore, um, we wanted to point out the difference between specific concrete socialist states. So it's not the same to talk about Yugoslav self-management, for instance, Bulgarian or Romanian type of socialism. Therefore, it's very important to uh, go again back to the archives and maybe to um, not only lean on to the Western tradition dealing with the socialism in that concrete context, but to put it more uh, concretely in a different, uh, uh, in a, in a different context of um, uh, concrete social states. Um, the third point, the third point um, of Western Marxist theory um, as an anti-capitalist discourse opposed to neoliberal agenda and the vacuum between, between them, um, we found that this position was actually complicated and um, especially if we want to talk about uh, socialist feminism because between the Marxist theory, especially in the Western tradition and the neoliberalism, somehow uh, socialist feminism is marginalized uh, in the context of the, uh, of, the problems, uh, of the problems we raised here. Um, besides that, um, the fourth point, I think those three are quite, uh, quite connected one with each other, so maybe uh, to go uh, a step further. Uh, the problem uh, of co-optation of feminism since the 1980s, which resulted in the problem of NGOization, neoliberalization, and the state outsourcing the feminist and many other issues to the NGO sector. So the point is that um, we want to raise also a question, the feminist analysis of the, uh, the state, the NGOs and the feminist issues which state outsourced, uh, outsourced to the uh, NGO sector. Therefore, the need of re-engaging the state and its social services and its relations to the women's questions. Um, also, we talked about uh, reclaiming the social welfare state, therefore, but this is, again, not a completely uh, the strategy which we rely on to um, as, as only one. So this is maybe, uh, again, the opportunity for you to fill in with, with uh, uh, some expense. Maybe, Tiana, you. Uh, I can, uh, since this is a Balkan forum, I would be very comfortable talking about, for example, the 
Bosnian case and uh, the role of NGOs in Bosnia, which is uh, in one sense, of course, highly problematic because you have all these NGOs being funded from foreign governors, foreign donors, and they have to uh, fill in the agenda within the project. So there is uh, little space left uh, to do real things that concern real women questions, for example. And this is one of the um, most important things I find. Uh, I find it very relevant even to say it out loud here, you have the problem of uh, thousands of women who were victims of the rapes during the war in Bosnia. And the state did not ever in any case resolve the issues of those women. They didn't even get the um, civil victim of the war status. So it was all outsourced in the NGO, NGO sector, which of course, in my opinion, does not do the best job because it's not like they can give them psychological support or help them in any significant way. So those women are there while the projects are on and after that they really lose the sight and they lose the opportunity to uh, to earn some money maybe and this is very and highly problematic. On the other hand uh, within the neoliberalism and uh, the whole uh, area of Balkan one could say uh, you have this process of uh, NGOization which is uh, present in every state. Uh, it's, um, as Ankita mentioned, it's, it was our conclusion. It's really the outsourcing of the role of the state into the NGO sector, whereby um, you have also internal uh, issues and internal affairs among women themselves and feminist organizations. So it's kind of uh, also uh, reducing our uh, ability to create uh, communities of solidarity and uh, it's uh, affecting uh, women's life in a, in a significant sense. Uh, NGOization of uh, feminism is a really huge problem because it creates a certain uh, how would I put it? It creates uh, not only uh, problems for women, but it creates uh, uh, different, uh, different elements within uh, the state. And I've completely lost myself, okay. but no. No, I made my point, but uh, NGOization is a severe problem. So we know from uh, Latin America, we know it from Eastern Europe, and these are all the same processes that are involved. So from the 70s onwards in Yugoslavia, we can say from 80s onwards, feminism really co-opted with uh, neoliberal ideology. And those same feminists, I really feel obliged to say, were the ones who were of course, women were victims of the war, but they were also accomplices in the whole whole of this process. So I think it's uh, extremely important. There might be certain differences between countries, between Bosnia, Serbia, Kosovo, Bulgaria, but in principle, the plan is the same. Okay. Uh, just one quick comment and maybe an add-on on what you said already is, uh, uh, is that um, NGOization politics brought uh, compartmentalization and particularization of problems, issues, and points of care. And also um, this discrepancies of identities so that in the end you could not approach the problems in a structural or systemic manner, which was for us, the first and foremost stuff. That's all. I, I would like to add uh, the relation, of course, of NGOs uh, with identity politics. So uh, in the case of Bosnia, and uh, it's very, very hard because you have these two discourses of depolitization. One of those discourses is NGOization of feminism, but not only of feminism, but different elements uh, related to what should be the role of the state. And on the other hand, you have this uh, situation where uh, Bosnia is uh, considered like a country case where people live from hate and chevapi, and that's about it. So uh, you have, uh, yeah, you have this uh, uh, strong, uh, implementation of identity politics even through NGOs and uh, insistence on uh, on the word ethnopolitics. So you have instead of identity politics using of the word ethnopolitics which is quite wrong and all of the NGOs really supported that. They supported uh, different, uh, different, different parts of Bosnia have different NGOs so instead of dealing with women's question in general they deal with Bosniak women, Serbian women, Croat women Women, instead of putting them all together because they all share their problems. So, 
Yeah. <coughs> yeah, uh, the sort of comment I have, it's kind of brief. Um, when it comes to injurization, again, I think this, there is pretty much universal uh, agreement that it's, it's the demonization of NGOs is a slippery slope uh, towards blinding ourselves to, you know, certain small victories that have been won. I mean, even on a, if it's on a policy level, still it's something. But um, what I wanted to say has more to do with the relationship between the sort of Western knowledge production that influenced what feminism is from the 1990, in the 1990s onwards and the work of NGOs. And these were two uh, very interrelated process because we're talking about pretty much the same agents, you know, who who were acting in the domain of um, uh, gender policy uh, on the one hand and in the domain of gender studies and its inst institutionalization in the region. So uh, you had very much the same sort of experts uh, for the last 15, 20 years who both defined uh, on the one hand the a, culture, a process of culturalization of gender studies uh, without really going through a phase of stating what women's studies is. You know, so there are internal debates in different contexts. Um, didn't we switch all too faster to gender studies in order to be inclusive and, you know, uh, sort of include, you know, masculinity studies and stuff like that? Um, and that culturalization of gender studies uh, kind of wiped away conditions for um, a renewal or at least some historiographical or historical sociological work on the previous um, incendiary, incendiary or dissident sorts of feminism, however invisible they are. I mean, in Bulgaria, it's hardly incendiary in the 80s, but there were some sort of you know, feminist circles however loosely defined, and maybe in other countries as well. So yeah, this is my point. That the, yeah. okay. Would you like to comment? Very briefly, because the question is so broad <laughs> that if you... Uh, I also come from a different experience. I cannot speak about the Balkans. And uh, I will basically say uh, how I look at the question that is being posed. Uh, from our, our experience, I come from the United States and I speak from the point of view of the women's movement there. Uh, although, of course, my perspective is also broader than that, but that's the movement to which I've been most related. Uh, my, my question mostly has been not only the issue of enjoyization, but more broadly, the whole question of institutionalization of the feminist movement and how the feminist movement that was a radical, subversive force and a mass movement, you know, in the early 1970s, actually has been, in a sense, domesticated and has been, in a way, channeled, you know, towards an institutional path and in many ways also used to support a neoliberal agenda. Uh, NGOization, it's one part, is one element of that process. But I would like to see the process perhaps approach in, in a broader way. Now, this raises all kinds of questions. How this was possible, right, and why? Why, in a way, uh, by the mid-1970, you have this massive institutional intervention into feminist politics, you know, promoted by the United Nations with conferences, with gatherings, etc. Uh, that be the United Nations, in a sense, appointed itself as the sponsor of women's rights. I think that this is one issue. I will speak about that tonight. It's an issue that we have to look into. Uh, the angelization is certainly a, a development of that, of that process uh, because with that institutionalization, new actors, you know, new agents come into the scene and the NGOs, I see the NGOs as one function of the NGOs being to replace the kind of role that the men and the male wage 
as played in the history of capitalism. You know, uh, one of the effects of the women's movement has been to impose a much more direct relation of women to capital. <laughs> and in a sense, the NGO have replaced the vanishing male role and male wage. You know, so now it's the NGO that is the source of income. But uh, and the last point I want to make is that. Uh, you know, I, I think that this process of institutionalization is not disconnected with some of the limitation in the feminist strategy. And uh, again, you know, that uh, I think in many ways uh, there was some important, at least in the United States, strategic mistakes that the women's movement um, committed because it embraced the idea of emancipation through wage labor and abandoned the whole terrain of reproduction. It abandoned that terrain as a terrain of struggle. Uh, so I think uh, um, these are the issues that will be, in my view, necessary to look And this is the, the, the perfect moment to switch to the next conclusion, which is exactly relying on the thesis uh, you, Sylvia, just talked about and, and we raised, uh, uh, raised here. Um, uh, it is a problem of artificial division of labor as a fundamental element or of supporting class and patriarchy in capitalism, whereby social reproductive continues to be defined as non-work and where it, it is retreatment under neoliberalism. So uh, the question is, of course, dealing with uh, locating the patriarchy and capitalism debate in the family sphere, following the stages of capitalism through the changes of family structure. And one uh, point more on that is uh, dealing with the uh, binary public-private, which still relates to the current agenda of feminist struggles under the economic crisis as an analytical framework. However, the binary further sanctifies and presupposes the domestic sphere. So the private is an extension of the public and there is further de-evaluation of domestic work once they return from the public. So our question here is concerned with um, the problem of uh, social reproduction in the context of tradition uh, which explains the, the women issue, the women problem through the binary public intimate sphere. So how are we going to address that question? Uh, I think it's very important to emphasize that the uh, uh, gender division of labor is uh, artificial as well as the private public sphere. It's also an artificial division created for the purpose of uh, perpetuating the first one. So I think it's very important to realize, of course, from the feminist perspective, not only the relation of uh, capitalism and patriarchy, which is in a feminist viewpoint quite obvious. So if uh, we need to elaborate how exactly are these two related, then uh, we would have strong and big uh, issues. But on the other hand, this uh, division of labor recreates not only class positions, which puts uh, women into the subordinate position and puts them into the field of uh, house and uh, unpaid reproductive work. And uh, capitalism, of course, uh, lives from that unpaid reproductive work. And in fact, it is the only thing that remained the same, let's say, from the Industrial Revolution, from the 19th century onwards. The role of the women in that sense did not change significantly. So we have the same situation today. Women are doing uh, their jobs if they have ones, and then when they get home, they still do the other job, which is not considered a job when, in fact, it is the source of uh, primary accumulation of capital. It has always been, and it is also today. So I think it's very important to uh, address the question of capitalism and patriarchy from several perspectives. And in this sense, these add-ons that we mentioned in the first conclusion are all actually related to this relation of capitalism and patriarchy because not only gender division of labor but you have divisions uh, class nation ethnicity and so forth and they all serve for the same purpose okay i would be brief again i just wanted to uh, mention that uh, about the public and private division we had like a small discussion uh, because 
as you all know, it comes from the liberal, liberal, liberal tradition, and we were, we were thinking whether to include this one or just to abandon it, uh, and then in the end agreed that we have to rethink and always try to, at least uh, try to re rethink and re-inscribe those terms with different meanings and, and different visions, because, uh, for example, we failed to understand the role of the state um, in our, for, for this specific occasion, which doesn't mean that we will not think about it. But uh, I think that this, what you said, that uh, private is an extension of, of the public, needs to be think uh, in, different, in different terms than it was thought from until, until now. I'm interested in saying something about how the domain of private, uh, of the private, that is to say the domain of uh, housework and reproductive labor, uh, when it comes to women, how this domain is hyper-determined even today by the sort of uh, former uh, socialist or communist regimes. And again, here provisionally, you have to differentiate between ex-Yugoslavia and other satellite Soviet countries, but <clears throat> um, what I, what I mean is uh, the sort of um, hyper-disidentification from both workerist identity and f uh, feminist causes in a country such as Bulgaria on, or in Romania. In Romania it's slightly different. I'm sure there are people in the audience who can talk about Ceausescu's natality politics and how that influenced Romania. So I won't go there. But when it comes to, to a country such as Bulgaria, uh, this is an important subject in uh, realizing how the the sort of prioritization of uh, an ontology of labor which had to take over um, gender differentiation between human beings basically uh, defined the sphere of the private until 1999 uh, and how that's reverberated still today and basically this means uh, to put it in a more simple term, in more simple terms, that after the first wave on, of um, um, collectivization of land um, um, after 1944, then you had a second uh, five-year plan who went on into um, the heavy industry, and then you had the third uh, five-year plan which went on into um, um, sort of. Uh, uh, providing an infrastructure that will help uh, workers have more free time, you know? And so it is in this particular context that in Bulgaria, the sphere of the private um, had to, um, to deal with the identification of women with the role of the housewife, you know? There was a heavy insistence in a country such as Bulgaria that women have to disidentify with the role of the housewife. And that was uh, such a strong overdetermination uh, that we have to read it as uh, still reverberating today because it has to do with the hypersexualization of the female body immediately after the, immediately after in the beginning of the transition. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, there are so many things. Yeah, I just want very schematically to make some point. You know, the relationship between the private and the public and the reason for this division, how this division is being maintained. Uh, the private, the personal, is the public because the private and the personal is actually a place of production. And it's a place of production, as I mentioned, the production of labor power, the workforce, and so forth, that has been really fundamental to you know, the, the reproduction of capitalist relation to the process of accumulation. So I think that's very important to make that clear. So the family relations down to relations in the bedroom, you can, we can look at them as relations of production. At least, uh, second, uh, I think uh, we need to rethink the question of the wage because when we look at the organization of the sexual division of labor, uh, we see that one way it has been maintained, in addition to the separation personal and public, it's also been through the use of the wage. And uh, the, the wage, uh, as we analyzed it from a feminist viewpoint, has demonstrated to have a very political dimension, you know, as an instrument not only to pay labor and, and hide unpaid labor, but also as an instrument to 
organize hierarchies, organize division, organize dependencies, and through those dependencies, organize delegation by the state, by capital, delegation of power to certain sectors of the working class over other sectors. Power to the wage, to command the labor and the body of the unwaged, in this case women, which has been a very powerful mechanism uh, to support capitalist hegemony. Uh, and then the last point I want to make is that um, despite much publicity to the contrary, you know, the unpaid labor the women perform in the home has continued despite the fact that women on mass scale, at least uh, in many parts of Europe, the United States, you know, have entered the so-called wage force. And by the way, this has not been a uniform process because many women have also lost their jobs in the process of globalization, Eastern Europe being a classic example. Uh, but nevertheless, there is an idea that now work, housework, reproduction has gone out of the home because so many services have been organized, etc. And in reality, as much housework, unpaid reproductive work has come back into the home through the cut of social services, the restructuring of healthcare work, restructuring of hospital care, and uh, you know, there's no time now to go more in detail, but uh, women remain the unpaid workers of the world. And most of that unpaid work, it's reproductive work. Um, this leads us to the final uh, conclusion. Um, and this is something, again, uh, that relies on the thesis uh, we raised here. Informalization of domestic work, the problem of the term commodity of care work, and the difference between individualism and social responsibility. So um, we tried to make a difference between a socialist concept of equality of outcome um, and liberal, state liberal concept of equal opportunity. So uh, the question we wanted to raise is how to create a strategy for equal wages and outcomes in general. Is, is that something uh, that we should address to law or something else? Um, nevertheless, um, um, we also pointed out um, in that context the problems of gift economy, which becomes charitization of work, underpaid pro bono voluntary the skilled work, which follows, of course, the line of women's unpaid work. So this is a, a last a last conclusion. You can make a comment, then um, I will give Igor the word. He has to say something, uh, then Silvia. Any wishes? Maybe after afterwards, huh? In a discussion, but if you wish. I just, I just wanted to, uh, if you're finished, and I know that you are, so yeah, I would like to um, just make a comment about the stumbling blocks that we had in our conversations and, and what, what were the so-called so problems, maybe. Um, so uh, while we were talking and it was really dense and, and intensive, we, uh, and I think this is something very common both for the left and for feminism, we um, encountered the problems of uh, what we are trying to interpret, so the historical parts, and what is now, and what is our vision, what are we aiming to. And uh, those three levels were always somehow being brought together and combining, which poses a problem, not, it's not a good thing. Uh, then we also had this um, problem that being a Balkan group and not only post-Yugoslav group, we had this uh, different interpretations of what, what the socialism that we're referring to as a past phenomenon is. Um, so different socialisms as a real, real uh, states than the state, what kind of state, you, maybe you've heard that we were talking about welfare state, but also we talked about socialist state and then we encountered the like true socialist state and what the true socialist state is. Um, in the end, we also had this problem about sex, gender and sexualities, which was encountered also yesterday during the open debates. And maybe, maybe the biggest one uh, was nationalism and how to also incorporate nationalism in the feminist and leftist debates. So maybe you would like to say something. 
uh, I will first uh, say something about the last yeah, about the last conclusion, of course, the commodification of care and the devastating effects of the austerity measures on women, primarily on women's life, with the cutting of public sector uh, education and so on. So I think these are all things we should uh, address. Of course, the role of the state within the whole thing and within the, within the whole process, whereby state uh, really said something like, okay, we are not paying for your education, we are not paying for your health services, for your care services, find your own way and finance yourself, which is of course a huge problem. And on the other hand, from a feminist viewpoint, and I think it's very important, we have this, uh, these huge problems of feminists uh, or women migrating from different parts of the world, go going into the richer countries to be those women performing the care work, which of course, uh, they work for extremely low wages. They are the citizens of the second row, I would say, if citizens citizens at all, so it creates different problems on different levels. And of course, it affects uh, the communities uh, which they left. It affects their families, the countries they left, and I think it's an overall project. But I think that this whole thing is a um, very, very intended consequence of globalization. So uh, it's not that it uh, happens randomly and uh, it's quite uh, obvious that on the one hand in the rich countries you have these women who have access to education, access to good works and so on, but uh, women performing their housework instead of them are actually uh, those that enable these women, these educated women, to be who they are. Uh, that's one thing. And the other th thing uh, I found extremely important is the question of nationalism, which if we talk about Balkan, if we talk about uh, post-Yugoslav spaces, I think it's extremely important to address these issues. And I don't think that the left in general, neither European nor the Balkan left, is uh, very has faced these issues uh, in a level that I find appropriate. And I think that um, I've seen uh, tendencies to reduce the questions of nationalism to the questions of political economy. And I have severe issues with reducing everything that happened in former Yugoslavia only to the issue of political economy because women who were raped in the war are not a matter of political economy. So I think that we have to address these issues from uh, different levels and different perspectives. Um, would you like to comment? Or? Okay, um, maybe now is the time... Uh, Yes, to make some overview. Yeah, I'll make my comments also in the form of some sort of overview or, or better uh, trying to work towards some sort of, so, not solution, but vision for the future, yes, yeah, strategies. Um, yeah, about the commodification of the productive work. Uh, definitely this has been a very, very important trend, you know, throughout the last three and four decades and very much rooted in the processes of primitive accumulation, new enclosures that uh, we have talked about in this conference and particularly this morning in the panel on the commons. The fact that so many people across the world uh, have been expropriated from their lands their sources of income has meant that uh, we have witnessed an incredible migration of women towards countries seen as you know, more affluent. Um, now, there's a whole literature for many, many years in the women's movement. I think internationally there's been an analysis of uh, the kind of uh, new crisis that the commodification of care has produced. Uh, Arlene Ash Oxchild, for example, has spoken about the global care chains, what has meant that so many immigrant women you know, had to leave their countries because they could not support their families, go abroad, reproduce other families when their own children were left behind, and what it meant that they were so far away, and the division that also this has created among women, because you have now a situation where women are related in a relationship of employer to employee, and so forth. 
uh, I think we are beginning to actually move away from that perspective as crucial as that perspective remains. And largely, uh, this is because of the struggle that domestic workers have been making. They, I, I have written that uh, domestic workers, uh, paid domestic workers, mostly immigrant, uh, a new feminist movement uh, in the sense that through their struggles to better their condition, they have actually begun to deal with many of the issues that were fundamental uh, to the women's movement in an early phase. In the, and beginning with the whole question of the devaluation so strong, so structural in capitalist society of reproductive work. And that without, in a sense, a revalorization of reproductive work. We cannot even think of reconstructing a different type of society. And the fact also that there are immigrant women, many times women of color, has also meant that they have revisited these issues. Uh, also, in, in, from the position of establishing all kinds of connection between the feminist struggle, the struggle about immigrant rights, and also the struggle against uh, racial discrimination. And seeing how the history of reproductive labor, because of the way it has been structurally, systematically devalued in capitalism, is also so embedded in the history of racial discrimination. So we are now beginning to think, and they, uh, certainly in the United States, domestic workers' movements are interested in building an alliance and creating a movement that includes uh, unpaid domestic worker as well as paid domestic worker, you know, and gaining the strength to, in fact, challenge the state on the question of reproduction. Uh, I also want to, want to say that we are living concerning the welfare state. But please tell me when I'm going beyond my allotted time. Just, just okay, yes. I'll, the, the, the issue of the welfare state, well, that's a great idea perhaps, but uh, right now we are in a situation in which the state is telling us, hey, you are on your own. Uh, so. It, uh, we are very interested in defending and struggling against you know, the constant, relentless attack that is taking place on you know, the public wealth. Uh, at the same time, we very much realize that that struggle is not sufficient. The struggle is not sufficient because, in fact, the cuts are continuing and also because three, four decades of economic restructuring has weakened the capacity the community have to negotiate with power, you know, with state. Uh, gentrification, economic restructuring has disintegrated the social fabric and uh, we need to reconstitute the social fabric and I think this aspect is one reason why the discourse on the commons certainly in the United States, and not only becoming so popular. Of course, in a particular way, we have to decide what we mean by commons, and we had a panel this morning, but because it, we, the commons are, among other things, also uh, politics that constitute a new type of cooperation, a new type of solidarity that creates a base a base for resistance and information. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have some, some hands, but before that, uh, Igor, you wanted to introduce. Ah, okay. Now, just a couple of technical remarks, uh, because you are much more now than um, at 10 a.m. So some of you who were here at 10 a.m. will hear the same thing again, but I think it's worth uh, reminding the audience why we are here and what is Balkan Forum and what are the working groups. This, this is not a panel. This is not a classical panel. So you uh, are not invited to address each individual, but to address working group that is preparing a document that will tell us 
something that will tell suggest us what to be done, what is to be done in the Balkans. This is the whole idea. We heard a lot of interesting theoretical insights. They are all individually, they write interesting stuff. They're brilliant intellectuals and we read them. What we want from them is not what they do in their theoretical work. We want them to tell us what is the political project behind this. So, <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. So I have to serve here as a political commissar, not only as your humble servant here. So we want political project. This is the question for you. The, it brings us back to why we, we established this at the, at the last Balkan Forum, which went really well. It was the first time people from all post-socialist Balkan came and our, our, also our friends from Austria and Hungary and so on. But there was again a sense of frustration, as you probably could, could sense it at any leftist radical meeting. So much good, great analysis, great understanding of what's wrong and the lack of concrete proposals. So we said, but we have concrete proposals. We can put them on paper. And we are, yeah, we are very, very articulate in, in this sense. So in this respect, you, what I would now call you to do, we are all into this together, meaning that they are preparing the document together with six groups that will go to, to a volume that will be distributed freely as a, another step in our discussions. So when you, are, uh, 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 when you take, take the word and so on, be constructive, be proactive. Give them certain suggestions that they could use later in this document. This is a collective work. This is all I want to say. And now, have a nice discussion. Eh? Hello. Uh, I'm coming from Vienna. I'm coming, I'm coming from Vienna. Uh, and we had a weekend before, last weekend, uh, I don't know the date, it's a weekend last week. It's a weekend before last week. Uh, uh, trains uh, which have uh, been organizing some sort of organization with its name Precaria Cafe. Precaria Cafe. It's a sort of, of, of political trade unionist uh, mixed uh, organization. To try some trade unionist work and political work in combination about uh, the, the issue of, of precarious state of, of, of work. Because we are convinced that it isn't possible in our times to tear it apart as it was usual. Uh, the work, the trade unions uh, work with the trade, uh, trade unionists, uh, with the working conditions and life and politics on the other sides for the party. You have to make a joint um, mm, yeah, you, you will know what you have to join and to do. <laughs> and they invited, uh, they invited uh, 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 three, three women from Madrid, which are coming from an organization which is called uh, Territorio Domestico. Uh, and this are uh, uh, a group in Madrid of, of uh, people, uh, so of domestic workers from every origin and uh, they try to make a work out of this condition of being a domestic workers, the worker far from home in, in this house. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, but... Uh, question, maybe. No, uh, I don't think, I, I want to recommend, look out in the internet to, to, I'm sure they have uh, some internet, also Territorio Domestico, they are called. And I, I, tell, I, tell, it, uh, I tell it because I were very much impressed of this presentation. We had a day of presentation and a day of workshop. And uh, different to some other times, uh, all, many of our political discussions are ending up, we are tired and depressed. And this time I go out and I, I, I thought, yes, I think we have start and we can do it this time to get rid of this shit system of state and capital, you know? And they got the feeling. So check it out, try to invite them, they can come and give this uh, wonderful experience to you.
Yes. None. Shall we collect a few questions and then maybe two? Okay, please. Is it on? Okay. Thank you very much. Though, I, I start with the criticism. And, and, you know, I'm sorry that you weren't in the previous panel. Now I repeat something that some of you have heard probably, but I think we are sliding in a second panel into something that Agnes criticized in the last panel, which is, you know, like we are not basing these explorations on empirical realities we have in our countries. Though, you know, some were touched, but in a very kind of still Western optic about this. Now, what are the realities of women in this country? NGOization is the reality of a minority of women in this country. Uh, feminist studies uh, work, you know, is a minority. What we're dealing with here is trafficking. What we're dealing with here is, you know, women from our region going to do the work that Silvia Federici was speaking about. But, you know, we're not commenting their reality because their reality is not even the second shift reality. Their reality is that they cannot take care of their own children. Um, what we're dealing with as well is a very, uh, you know, big race of traditionalism, religion and so forth. We are dealing with different religious minorities that clash, but that also reproduce same traditions. Now, what theory should come out of this and what political project is something very different than I think what I have heard from this panel by now. Because by now, what I heard is something that relates more first to urban middle classes. So we are now speaking of gender and class. No, we are speaking of gender and middle class. And second, you know, we are still dealing very much. We are still dealing much, very much with the Western optics. You know, there is a theory. Maybe you know something here relates to it. So we use this optic to identify such processes, but we don't write theory out of our own experiences. And thus, like we end up just reproducing the same things that are irrelevant to our societies and to the political projects that we have to do in, to engage them. One more question, then a commentary, Xenia, and then we will. No, no, I. Sorry. No, but we need to take one more, just one question, Andrea. then to answer them, and then to collect more. Okay. I don't hear you. Intervention. I aha, aha. How we operate with the, with the interventions? Are we? The idea is to just let the, the, the audience speak for us. Okay. And then at the end you'll summarize. Okay, then Xenia and the... Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I, I had a completely different thing on my mind, but now when you said this, I oh, I wanted to ask, actually, I'm thinking about um, what you presented. Uh, it should be used uh, afterwards as some kind of guide for people who are uh, in activists in academia, in social movements all over uh, around the Balkans. So I'm wondering now, when I get back home, uh, the issue would I would really like to uh, know more from like feminist uh, point of view. It would be firstly when you are saying about we are not uh, dealing with identity, we are dealing with structural uh, position, role, woman, whatever. How is it created? Uh, what? kind of uh, general approach should we have as leftist, feminist, uh, uh, it's an open, uh, new left uh, movement toward the politics of identity since there is, as you already said, like clerica clericalization, r nationalism is like, I don't know, it's not a big uh, news for, for, uh, for Balkan, it, nev it was just, uh, it's always here. It's just a matter of time when it will be, uh, when it will grow or less. And on on the other side, there is also uh, uh, movements based on identity, uh, like LGBT movement, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, how to um, intervene in 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 one on one hand on these movements? And, and to switch focus from 
um, let's say like we are leftist and we are just now you know uh, making alliances with feminists and and uh, LGBT movement who are like on our side how to switch switch our discourse actually from the point of view where we are working really together and including all like uh, creation of sexuality creation of this private intimate uh, space uh, which is reserved only for four walls etc etc which i see a lot of uh, 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 what was the point is the, to, to recommend you to switch the point from this this perspective you know the burden shouldn't be on women or the burden shouldn't be on lgbt and queer movement to change the society but there are some alliances here that we can do together like for example reproductive uh, uh, work or creation of desire connected to the role of the woman and man into heterosexual marriages, which is then by the queer movement totally uh, can meet the leftist, uh, uh, leftist um, critiques on the family as a capitalistic reproductive uh, matrix, etc. Okay, okay. That's, that was that, mainly I my. Uh, was the, uh, I would really like uh, okay. to, to hear your uh, uh, okay. comments on this and what would be in this document, for we example. We wrote it down. We will go back to that. Thank okay. you. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm not Andrea. finished. Okay, it's finally working. I would like to stress out what Igor said earlier. So, in order for this uh, Balkan Forum to succeed as a collective work, and in order for all of us. To, to be able to produce the final, the, uh, the final paper uh, of all the working groups, it is absolutely necessary uh, for, for public and for the audience to have uh, equal, um, equal opportunity to interfere with their comments and not questions with the panelists. So they have been only working uh, longer, but you have uh, equal right to express uh, uh, your opinion and you can also say if you think that the paper should uh, take a turn and go in uh, uh, in uh, some other directions. If conclusions uh, should be changed then it is open for discussion. So uh, uh, um, it is. This is how Balkan Forum is uh, conceptualized, and for order, uh, uh, in order for it to succeed as such, we really need this to be a collective work. So please, uh, you're free to give comments. This and then and then here. Yes, so the first hand, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. I think that is too much. Yes, yes but they, they, they instructed us not to talk to, to leave the audience. I don't know. No, 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 it's not your turn, sorry. Um, the upstairs, the microphone thank, is thank up. Thank you. Uh, just along the lines of the last uh, comment, I would like to suggest a, a shift of um, uh, direction of the discussion. Um, because I think what was discussing so far was this um, idea of um, how to somehow refine uh, the concepts that we're working with, the theories that we're working with, either being a middle class or working class or em employing a, a Western perspective or less uh, Western perspective and so on. So I think it's an it's a internal question of refinement. And now I would like to bring a, a very shortly um, my own perspective uh, in this discussion, uh, my own perspective uh, being uh, this of a um, um, uh, sort of uh, activist within the Romanian uh, leftist scene and its uh, struggles there, and I will uh, uh, hope it's relevant uh, through these uh, precise examples, because I think um, for, we have this uh, discussion about the NGOization of uh, uh, gender studies, women's studies, feminism, and so on, all this. Um, uh, relations, but then if you, uh, we need to go a, little, a step further into the concrete uh, localities in which this is uh, happening, especially from a leftist perspective, because a series of contradictions arise. For example, in, in the Romanian case, I will uh, sketch uh, many of the things now. You have a very good uh, criticism from the liberal uh, feminists of, for example, patriarchy, uh, male uh, uh, dominance, uh, inequalities, and so on, uh, that are structural. Even most most of the things that were uh, discussed here, very well. Uh, put on the uh, agenda. But at the same time, liberal feminism in Romania is perfect, perfectly uh, institutionalized and aligned with uh, all the powers 
uh, uh, that be uh, at this uh, uh, certain conjuncture in the Romanian society. So that basically prevents any sort of uh, possibilities of alliance from an emerging left with this kind of feminism because it's perceived to be on the side of power. Then we can take a different uh, example, LGTB movement, which is, of course, in a very conservative orthodox um, uh, country, very marginalized, violently abused many times. Fine, I mean, this is absolutely clear and it's part of the leftist agenda. But then it comes the question of concrete political struggles, concrete po political agendas. What happens, you look at the LGTB movement in Romania, again, NGOized, Western-oriented, funded, and so on. And you, what you see there is, of course, middle-class people again, fighting for a very conservative, a conservative agenda in terms of, I don't know, marriage, um, um, all this um, uh, language of rights and, and so on, which basically contradicts the uh, other strands of le leftist uh, feminism, which is being pushed out mainly because of not, uh, not being uh, able to be institutionalized. Okay, and then of course you have the leftist question, what do you do in this case in terms of uh, alliances? A final third uh, example. Uh, a radical Marxist, a radical uh, uh, feminist of uh, various uh, sorts, completely marginalized from this uh, power structure within feminist gender uh, movements and so on, but at the same time marginalized within the leftist movement as such because of a, a complete uh, communication breakdown, breakdown, to put it this way. You have basically uh, radical uh, activists schooled in Western Europe, for example, or in a different language, which is absolutely impossible to communicate same basic ideas with, for example, women that stayed at home and probably share the same Marxist ideas, or even with men that stayed at home and share probably the same ideas. So, I mean, for me, the real challenge now, which I think we already have this kind of theoretical background uh, that we can rely on, uh, which is very sophisticated already. For me, the, the real question is how to intervene in these precise uh, struggles that are going on on, ground, on the ground in order to make them uh, feasible and workable for a leftist perspective, because otherwise we see this uh, kind of strange alliances uh, all the time or uh, some things that are completely unexplainable, like, I don't know, some leftist uh, supporting uh, workers, but of course workers being completely homophobic and so on, things that uh, um, doesn't, doesn't make any sense in any traditional sort of uh, uh, theoretical frameworks. But again, I think it's not the problem with theory, I think it's more the problem of how to intervene in particular struggles. That's, uh, that's... I think here on the left. Yes. No, no, we have. She, she, sorry, she was raising her okay, hand. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think I'll better introduce myself, uh, not to, uh, to, to be clear what I'm talking about. Uh, my name is Vesna, that's not so important, but I belong to this uh, very early movements in former Yugoslavia and Croatia to the feminism of the late 70s. Um, and then uh, again in the 80s, I was a little bit out of it because I didn't like the professionalization, but this is now another thing, not NGOization, but the professionalization of feminism. And I returned into the 90s, which was kind of a necessity with the wars and the rapes and the way the rapes were explained and appropriated and so on and so on. Uh, so these are, um, from what I heard here, um, it seems that I belong to the two waves of former Yugoslav femini uh, feminism and, and creation, which should be labeled, so like the first one as a liberal, although it's very difficult to establish today this etiquette, and then the second one, the 19th one, as NGO NGOized. Uh, what I want to say, although I will wait for this document because I can't, uh, can't know what was the discussion like, uh, but the first wave of, um, uh, of the former Yugoslav feminism, which happened with the end, end of the 70s, was uh, very much connected to the European feminism at that time, which was very strong. And then it was very nearly connected to the Marxist group Praxis. So I'm not going to explain what it was, but it was really, uh, you know, it was socially, politically, and class aware. Uh, that's the first thing. But I'd prefer to talk about this second uh, appearance and uh, perception which I read from this 
uh, that the, the 90s where feminism was co-opted and corrupted through the NGOization. Sure, NGO is a form which comes uh, with the so-called democracy or the pluralism of the elections, and it's just the structural part of it. It's like saying today, like you are co-opted from the by the state and corporations uh, uh, funded festival or by the academia. That was the form of the organization. But then to approach the NGOs uh, without differentiation, without uh, uh, analyzing what sort of uh, NGOs uh, operated, how they emerged, whether they were so-called uh, um, grassroots or they were imposed by the funders from the outside, which was happening much, much later than the early 90s. This is one of these, um, how to say it nicely, one of these uh, arrogant Western views, <laughs> or, or middle class uh, view, because the situation was so much different. And one thing I know, and I do know Croatian situation, and a little bit the Bosnian, and I'm really, I'm really surprised with your interpretation, because I know exactly the different like the movement of Zenica, uh, which was trying to dissolve the state to, to use and reduce uh, raped women for the ethnic conflicts and ethnic uh, interpretation of gender. Well, as much as they could, you know, there were bombs around and there were hundreds of women within the Zenica uh, premises. So what I really want to know, trying, but of course they cannot, how, you can't, you have difficulties to deal with the state today. And the state was very much involved in privatization, but also in the warmongering and uh, ethnicization of the whole problem. So, I mean, to, to win the state, uh, to be stronger than the state in that time is kind of uh, um, not only non-realistic, but I don't know how to call it. What I know about, can I have some water, please? You didn't uh, foresee so many. Speakers, uh, you only wanted questions. So. No, we can't. Oh, just some water, please. <laughs> See? Okay, we are what I really wanted to say... We are totally okay if you want to switch this discussion between you. We can always talk afterwards okay. if you want. The, the so main point, just to say... Yeah that it was a political project in the early 90s in the countries of the former Yugoslavia. Serbia, Bosnia and Croatia, because these are the countries which are in plan. The political project was, at that time, to dissolve the state, to use the women, and to uh, use the women's bodies and the phenomenon of the mass rape in their state capitalization, I mean transition, and the political purposes. That was one purpose, and it was a political movement which never became a big political movement. The second point of this political project was the direct help. There were hundreds and thousands of women. We were working here, women's groups in Bosnia, all with a different approach. So direct help with taking it out from the charity context introducing it as a political work. So that was the point. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so it's just an example from uh, Hungary uh, to illustrate how, you know, on two days empirical ground, one can think of connecting leftist struggle with feminist struggle. Uh, so, one of the empirical base of, you know, what's happening with uh, women in Hungary is that after 89, the first people to be thrown out of the, of the industry that was being privatized, privatized uh, were the women. So they went back to, uh, to the homes uh, with no external connection anymore except uh, uh, these uh, very kinship relations of uh, mutual support and uh, alternative subsistence. And there are very uh, convincing arguments, ethnographic arguments that say that, you know, this was a process where, where women lost their public identity 
communities, uh, saying that they would, for instance, speak in interviews about their jobs as my job and my working relationships, but that was in the past. And what is your present now? Well, it's our family, our kitchen, our subsistence. Uh, and Okay, so these are families that, that are becoming poorer and poorer during the 90s, and then there comes the, the crash with the housing debt. Uh, and, you know, with this uh, new poorer situation, uh, they are uh, becoming to have this uh, strategy of poorer families where it is the woman who uh, is responsible for subsistence. Uh, so they are actually the economic heads of the families. Uh, so they have the most uh, intensive uh, relationship with the debt. Uh, because they have to deal with those little monies uh, every uh, uh, week. And now there is a new movement uh, against debt on a nationalist base, uh, saying that it is the foreigners who want to push out uh, of our houses, you know who the foreigners are, it's Jewish bankers, and so on. Um, and this movement is uh, uh, framed in a nationalist key, uh, where, you know, the, the subject of politics is the male, and the male uh, proud, uh, bravery uh, and so on, uh, and the, the object of politics is, is the male too. So the women just don't feature there. And I go to their demonstration and what I see is that, you know, there are hundreds of people, uh, half of them are women, and it is the families who have come, so it's the economic core, you know, a core group that has come. And I know those, those kinds of women because I, I also do interviews with them and about the economic issues of the family they speak in, one person singular, I say, I do this and that with our money. So they are the economic heads, but within the movement, the, the feminist voice doesn't appear, I mean, even the woman doesn't appear as, you know, a living creature. And we are in a, you know, in a public space filled half with women. Uh, so this is, this is a situation where uh, I think uh, a leftist framing of, you know, making explicit the uh, economic relationships, what that is about, how it's not about national proud, uh, pride, but, uh, you know, about a certain uh, capitalist uh, relationships would also connect uh, to uh, the emancipatory uh, potentials of these women who are actually very strong players in the game, but it doesn't become politicized explicitly. I'll just make it very short. It was just a, a, a suggestion coming again, also from the experience of uh, um, of Romania and uh, a little bit Moldova, and um, um, it was a, as a suggestion uh, in our struggles and against also cooptation and for the well growth, as let's say, of uh, of uh, this leftist feminist, our leftist feminist movements um, to to put also a little bit of an emphasis on the fight to, uh, uh, on the struggle to horizontalize uh, the relation between uh, uh, care economy and uh, uh, w the other economies, right? The, whatever they call real world economy and so on and so forth. From the, pers from the but, but from the concrete historical experience that we have lived, right? So, you know, from Romania and Moldova, the conc that Concrete experience includes the, commodifica the commodification of domestic work, the export of, uh, of uh, domestic work and uh, sex trafficking, as, as well as uh, uh, the uh, commodification of the bodies in the form of uh, uh, the networks of, uh, well, kidney trafficking, for instance. Yeah? And uh, this, I think that we need to, to, to be a little bit more concrete also in the sense of naming names and putting uh, emphasis on, on the differences between this uh, uh, um, phenomena relating cap the capitalization and col colonization uh, uh, of Eastern and after 89 geographically and so with names and particular phenomena uh, rather than uh, uh, going towards a more general um, frame of, uh, uh, of analysis. That was it. Uh, now, now we now we'll switch to the to the panelists, maybe to respond. A moment. Okay, then, then, excuse. No, 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 no. First, first he, and then. Aha, uh -huh, if he. 
Nevertheless, he, he raised his hand. Please, please, speak you. But... Uh -huh. Okay. 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 Yeah, I uh, caught uh, short. Please, I, I short, try. yes. Uh, 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 long life to the comrade political commissar. Uh, long life to the political commissar. He suggested that no speech without practical succession. Uh, success, uh, suggest. I did my, my thing. I, I say, to, to put it in old terms, let thousand territorial domesticos blow up. And in the other species, I didn't get so much practical suggestions. But I now have the right to make some theoretical remarks. I had my practical uh, suggestion made. And now the two things of theoretical remarks. First, first, first thing, I think, uh, yeah, it's my, my there. Yeah. No, uh, the, 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 the thing of 68, uh, the positive thing of, of 68 was, in my opinion, that it takes a broader approach to, to politics than this narrow-minded economic, political, military. It takes a bro broader so social uh, attempt. And this was uh, make it this movement uh, weak in some sense. Because uh, 68, in my, in my opinion, uh, wasn't defeated by military force but by cooptation. And second remark, uh, the, uh, we should think about this uh, reproduction work in, in, in terms of revolution and counter-revolution. And I think uh, the electronification and mechanization of the uh, housework has been a counter-revolution against con collective uh, uh, experiments to do this work and to keep it in this narrow family form. Uh, I have a uh, practical proposer, uh, pr proposal uh, uh, for our leftist uh, male friends. For example, not to take over uh, moderator role, but to take uh, over domestic uh, unpaid work uh, even uh, at, at least half of that at uh, home. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just uh, uh, again, a short suggestion coming from the experience both of the Balkans and of the left and of the left on the Balkans. Uh, it uh, sort of deals with the question of women on the left. Uh, and I think uh, the, you guys should actually uh, incorporate this, this question within the final document as to what should be done. Uh, with this que question, because in, in all of our countries, basically women are under-organized on the left. Uh, in most, they're underrepresented, and in most cases, there is a clear division of labor, which is usually not being talked about, uh, uh, th that basically sums up in uh, men speak, women do. So uh, that is something I think, uh, uh, when, when speaking about feminism and left, and uh, future alliances, and their con con concrete political forms, that, that, that have been discussed, uh, well, uh, about Syriza, about all those party models, new party models, etc. I think we need to be uh, dealing, uh, talking openly about this question. And I think we need uh, uh, to be uh, putting, you know, both uh, feminists, but especially left uh, uh, organizations, groups, collectives, etc., et uh, 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 to, to, you know, to, to, to do something, uh, to do something about it. So. Uh, we need some, I think, practical suggestions. I can only speak uh, in in the name of basically my organization, Marx 21. We we took this question really seriously in the past few months. We produced a, a special edition of our newspaper that deals with the question of women's liberation, and we initiated a, a left feminist front uh, in Serbia that that it, that should actually start dealing, uh, you know, posing this question uh, publicly. So uh, this is one suggestion Adriana knows. 
uh, about it. So uh, probably there are more ways to do to do this, but I think it's very important to to to, to have this sort of at least some sort of guidelines for the left on the on the Balkans, because we, without women on the left, we cannot really talk about anything. Okay. Um. I think that you raise uh, many important questions and uh, emergent questions. That I think that is very important. And uh, uh, also, I think that it was uh, the answers recommendation are a bit simplified. So uh, I think I suggest to go deeper in those problems. And I have just a few remarks. I will try to be short. Uh, the first one was is socialist feminism in Marxist uh, feminism in Yugoslavia in the 50s, 60s, 70s, who are representatives, what was agenda, who dealt with housework and other issues. So I think that we are uh, actually trying to, re to invent our feminist socialist tradition through this question, and at the same time to make some kind of discreditation of uh, NGO sectors, and it seems to me that, uh, uh, like Stanimer says, demonization of the NGO sectors is also, uh, in a way, simplified, uh, especially in the 19th in Yugoslavia, and uh, it seems to me that it looks much more like a witch hunt again than the critical analysis of the concept of NGOization and so on. So we use again the same principles, the ways of production of the knowledge of the movement today with NGO sector and with these same practices actually, with same forms. So I think that there should be a bit reflective. Uh, for me, very important question is the question of the family. And then we came uh, back to the more like women working movement of the 30s in Yugoslavia, where this question was discussed. And uh, uh, when uh, not did not declare themselves uh, as feminists at that time, but uh, women from the working movement in the end of the 30s in, in Yugoslavia actually do on these issues, uh, suggesting new forms of. Uh, social reproduction. So I think that is very important period, not important, uh, more important than the period of, of the 60s, 70s, 80s in Yugoslavia, where uh, patriarchy was perpetuated by socialist state. So I think that we have to make distinction between what is socialist feminism and uh, what, uh, about what we speak when we speak about this. So this was my... Uh, Maria, you don't want to? Okay. Yes, now we can start. Diana. Okay, I will uh, first uh, respond to what uh, Mrs. Vesna said with all the respect, of course. Uh, when I talked about uh, NGOs in Bosnia, first of all, it's a quite different situation than it is in Serbia and in Croatia because the NGOs in Bosnia really fl flourished after the 1995 Dayton Peace Accord and after that you have the overall NGOization. When I said that the role of NGOs in Bosnia is quite specific and uh, quite ambivalent, the outsourcing of the role of the states into the NGOs, which of course clearly I said even when I talked about it, on the one hand really did help these women, but in my opinion not in a significant way. They didn't get much of psychological support. They yes, yes. Feminist psychological support is not a psychological support, so uh, I would really have... The, please don't, don't interrupt, just, just leave her to say and then I will give I would the have a little issue with this because, I mean, I live there and I have worked within one of these organizations, I have talked to these women... Please and I don't, don't interrupt. I don't think they got uh, enough of support, so that's my opinion. Uh, on the other hand, someone mentioned religion or something. We talked about it, it was one of our first add-ons. So religion, ethnicity, race, and so on and so forth is just 
the part of the whole add-on strategy. And uh, someone from Romania, I think, mentioned the question of the feminism and the left, and I think that Matija has put it really nicely. And in the end, I think that men on the left are their own victims when they don't understand the role of the women on the left. So uh, that would be my okay. response. Let's, let's move on. Adria, no. Would you like, Silvia, to, to make a few? Uh, a couple of words, just a very couple of words, because there are obviously debates that are relating to situations that I'm not really familiar with, and I don't want to say things that are not appropriate. Um, I have something to in reply to your first comment, which is that um, uh, Territorio Domestico is a very interesting organization. And I want to mention a document that myself and an English feminist, Camille Babagallo, produced. It's a whole issue of the online journal called The Commoner. I don't know, some of you may be familiar. You can get it online. And that uh, was the issue that we did several months ago. Uh, the last issue of the commoner, and it has a whole set of interviews. It's called Care, Work, and the Commons. And it looks at about the efforts that people are making around re doing reproductive commons. And many um, discussions are interviews with domestic workers, including Territorio Domestico. In fact, their picture is on the front. Um, the only other thing that I want to mention is really simply say the importance of a feminist perspective and a perspective that deals with the issue of reproduction in terms of uh, transformative politics, you know, politics beyond liberalism but also beyond capitalism, and uh, the importance uh, for the feminist politics and the discussion of reproduction and the uh, challenge on the sexual division of labor in all the forms that it takes today because in fact we cannot really build any strong movement until the division that exists between women and men at this point persists. And I only wanted to mention one thing and I conclude with that. Today the violence against women, you know, it's not only both the institutional violence as well as the interpersonal violence is certainly one important, crucial obstacle to any form of resistance and to any form of transformative political project. You know, every minute we know in the United States a woman is battered or it is uh, raped, sexually assaulted, and so forth. We cannot transform the world if half of the commoners beat up the other half. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Adriana? There is only one thing I would, I would want to say. I think it's very important, especially because uh, some of you raised it and, and it should have been also in our, one of our conclusions or maybe, um, maybe redefined conclusion. Anyway, um, I just wanted to say that the thing that they are pressing, very pressing issues which are relevant today, like unemployment, which was not one of the issues that was tackled in the, I don't know, last 10 years or so, I'm talking about Serbia because I, uh, in the NGOs and especially feminist NGOs, that does not mean, and it cannot mean that we have the right to uh, dismiss the traditions that we're coming from or to negate them or to make the rift with them. Uh, we just have to try to con contextualize them. And I think that's very important what you said and we had, um, serious discussions within our groups because we didn't understand each other coming from Stanimir from, from the country which did not wage the war or endure the war and we coming from different kinds of 90s traditions. So yes, I think that continuation and, and understanding the continuance of what the feminist tradition was in this country, I think of Yugoslavia and then post-Yugoslav spaces, is very, very important. So not the dismissal, not, I don't know. That's, that's the one thing that I wanted to emphasize. Okay. Now, I'm gonna try 
to address the first two questions by Maria and Xenia at the same time because I find them uh, related. But before that, to the question of the differentiation of the NGOs, we explicitly stated that we do not have to demonize NGO and we do recognize what the NGO, liberal feminist NGOs in the 90s did. So, so ha having said that, raising the question, you know, is you know, a matter of, you know, performativity, you know. So anyway, uh, Maria, just comradely, you know, even if I was a middle class and I'm not, you know, I, I would be, you know, you know, terrified by your comment, why? You know, now, now you claim we have to, we have to, we have to go into specific practicalities, you know, and the sort of everyday life issues as if, they are not implied in this sort of document which is going to be developed, uh, as it was stated by Igor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So now, if we have ended up with a document, and, and I'm saying this not because of the document, because what you speak, the way you spoke, is sort of leftist stereotype for me. Sorry, that I never expected I'm going to say this to you. But what you said sounds a little bit like, uh, what it, if we were putting in this document trafficking of women, for example, and if you go, if you went under a specific listing, you know, of what women undergo, and through what problems women undergo at this point, you would have ended up with a comment saying, this sounds like a, li a liberal policy paper. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sorry, but this will, be, this will be the consequence for me practically, you know, if we did a document like that, because I would like to differenti differentiate myself from the liberal, democratical, feminist tradition by going into strategizing. And I'm sorry if you don't like this, but this is the way I would, I would do it, you know. Which partly answers the question of, of, of Xenia on how do we practically approach identity po politics. Well, we do not, you know, go berserk in a, into abstract theories as much as we're indebted to these theories. But why we're indebted in these theories and why this panel might sound highfalutin only because my generation, I'm pretty much the same age, you know, you know, and we are a little tiny minority, you know, and some of us understand more feminist theory, some of us understand more queer theory, but they intersect, you know. Why are we so indebted and why this is important? I mean, and I'm sorry if our language was highfalutin, you know, because we are, let's face it, especially in the left wing, you know, very few people who actually try to understood in the last, say, 10 years, you know, which is not a long history of personal experience anyway, let alone influencing any social movements. We try to understand in the, in the course of the last 10 years, you know, what were the material conditions of production of, of, of certain identities in our region, you know. You know. And that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay, Ton, I have to clap. Um, so we have still... Uh, 10 minutes or not we can i can ask can use them? you can use them or we can try to i don't know shortly state some of practical strategies that we need to offer or something like that if you would like that then we can start adriana they <laughs> Well, Ankitsa, the, Ankitsa wanted us to, to, in the end, to have some strategies or maybe to um, say something about the alliances. Um, I will say that um, um, I, I, had the in, I had very important division in mind about the, the invited and invented spaces of citizenship and uh, that is something which is very important for me because it, it talks about the grassroots movements which, um, which work against the system and also, uh, on the other hand, the different types of grassroots with also, which also work sometimes with the system. But you cannot always say where the one will end up because sometimes one is against the system and the other is just has to work with it. So, yeah, I, I think that uh, we have to mobilize all, all, all different kinds of... Um, uh, and in exactly what you said, that we have to mobilize all different types and kinds of, of, of activisms in order to... and also 
those that were that are against against the system all the time because they are possibly in the position to be against the system all the time but also those that had to side sometimes with the system and then be against the system at other times i don't know if i'm if i'm uh, completely understandable but i think that's that's what's exactly what's happening with feminism unfortunately and if, with feminist groups um, so that would be probably what i would say about the alliances <laughs> Uh, to conclude, I could say that uh, within the Balkan area, of course, feminists and uh, feminist uh, groups, uh, activists, movements are in a rather difficult position where we have this con constant uh, redefining uh, the role of women between the market and between the national. And uh, I think that feminists, there are plenty of things that can unite us. Those are the struggles for the commons, for the access to education, to water, to... I don't know, but there are struggles that can unite us and we should all be aware of this fact and uh, perhaps start with a um, little step by step with little associations and of course in the end I think that we need uh, repolitization of feminism because feminism unless it is political loses its force and emancipatory potential. So, yeah, feminism as a political critique. So, if we are on practicalities, I would exploit my gender. Uh, and I would just want to say two sentences addressing uh, directly and the, the male constituents in this whole and indirectly the ones related to them in their own groups. Um, now, I think we're pretty aware that there is uh, the problem that Matja spoke about in, um, in the so-called new left in the Balkans, uh, you know, guys speak, women do, which is not always the case. There are certain cities that I know of where this is not the case. There are certain cities that, where there is no female constituency whatsoever. So. Um, in this context, I just want to greet Marx 21 and tell you that what they did with their particular efforts uh, by producing this specific journal, uh, an issue of Solidarnos, is a model to follow, and I want to greet them. And I, and I think other groups should learn from that sort of experience, even if that sounds overly theoretical sometimes, or maybe, of course, other more practical things should be followed up, should be a follow-up. Um, but again, it's a matter of uh, self-reflexivity, which is not going to come by by the work of women themselves being involved in left-wing groups. It's a matter of uh, men working on their own self-awareness. Um, just a couple of words to... Um, say that we have been very inspired in our struggle um, by the kind of popular feminism that has been developing in the last 20, 30 years throughout Latin America. And there's been a very powerful example, although clearly the social context is so different from the context in the United States. But what we have learned from the popular feminist movement, grassroots women's movement of Chile, Peru, Argentina, is that in fact, they have, starting from uh, organization, um, transformation on the terrain of reproduction, they in fact have been able to build communities of cares and communities of resistance that have allowed millions of people to survive and even to reconstitute the social fabric in very terrible situation. For example, in Chile, after the coup of Pinochet, it was the women who came forward uh, through the work that they did in their community you know, to set up, for example, all kinds of cooperative forms of reproduction to deal with the impoverishment to deal with the repression. For example, beginning to cook together, the Ola Comunes, you know, the common kitchen, creating committees to shop together, 
creating committees to garden together, so that in fact a whole network of resistance was built in this experiences being replicated in many other countries. There were points in which in the 1990s in uh, Lima there will be like seven, six thousand, seven thousand committees of women, even glass of milk committees to provide children some food, some nutrition at the time in which the austerity was so severe that uh, uh, people were really starving. And this committee also became not only uh, economic, you know, means of survival, but it also became means of breaking down the isolation in which people found themselves, particularly in situations of extreme, not only economic impoverishment, but political repression. Uh, we cannot reproduce those experiences in the US, but they've been extremely important, and we are thinking of them when uh, we now begin to organize around the question of communities of care also in the US and the reproductive commons, which are in fact the beginning to take off with immense problem. But we certainly have a proliferation of activities, initiative, whether it is time banks, whether it is urban garden, whether it is accountability structures, so that we create commoning of structures in uh, the, at the neighborhood level so that we don't have to go to the police when, for example, some abuse is being committed and so forth. So this is something I'd like to uh, propose. Thank that. You. Okay, um, uh, now I will just a moment uh, like to thank you all for the uh, constructive comments. Uh, what we need to say is that we are going certainly uh, to take them in consideration and to put them in uh, our final paper. That, that was the intention uh, of the discussion. Of course, um, uh, some, some comments were more constructive, some of them less that needs to be said. But um, the, the bottom line is that the conclusion um, uh, is that we will probably go, that we will probably concentrate uh, the final paper on the um, concrete, concrete suggestions like equality of outcome, socialization and redistribution of work, transformative politics and uh, uh, creating the platform for forms of resistance. Therefore, we need a critique of all sorts of politics through the NGOs, parliamentarian politics and sub-political level. That was the intention maybe to, to grasp it from there. But of course, uh, the methodological uh, notes from the beginning are here. Um, we are trying to imply some sort of socialist femini feminism inside it and we will probably try to explain what does it what does it actually in contemporary sense of the word that means um, if this is it i think that xenia uh, also wanted to contribute because i think we understood it yeah, and I just, uh, we were talking about that it's not a, a question of having the same document and as uh, 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 from a liberal feminist perspective, but exactly the opposite to having a document, to having an analysis on the issues that are important, like trafficking, like politics of identity, like critique of politics of identity, like uh, sexuality, whatever, from socialist feminist perspective, like what what actually you said at the end, but it was not, I don't know, I, for me... Okay, yeah, thank you very important. much for your concentration. It was quite a long discussion, but it should be that way.